In this video, I will be showing you how to use web fallbacks in your app so that you can take WordPress content that is not yet supported in our React Native views and still display that content in the app in an elegant way. So if I go into the More screen and scroll down, you can see I've added two web pages in here. One is the WooCommerce shop, and the other is a custom post type that I created in our connected WordPress site called Movies. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on WooCommerce. What we are looking at here is the WooCommerce shop. This is actually a WordPress page loading within the app, displaying a responsive layout coming from the Buddy Boss theme. You will notice that this page is using a native header bar at the top from the app. And as I scroll down, you can see that the header and the footer from the theme have actually been removed to make the page integrate seamlessly within the app. In Buddy Boss theme, we have added some code that allows the theme to detect when it is being loaded inside of our app, and then it automatically strips out both the footer and the header from the theme. This code that is in Buddy Boss theme can also be adapted to do the same thing in other themes if you're not using Buddy Boss theme. We'll publish tutorials later on showing you how to do that. So let's go ahead and tap on a product. And we can see that the product loads nicely within the app. I can tap on this back arrow to move back to the shop. And then we can tap back again to come back to the more screen. The experience really feels intuitive within the app because we're maintaining the header bars and back arrows, allowing us to navigate through web content the same way that we navigate through native app content. All right, so that was WooCommerce. Now what about a custom post type? This movies tab here is coming from a simple custom post type that I just created in the WordPress backend for displaying movie posts. So let's go ahead and tap on movies. And here we can see an archive of all movie posts. This is a responsive web view showing our movies custom post type loading in the Buddy Boss theme. And again, we can see that the header and the footer have both been automatically removed. So let's go ahead and tap on one of these movies. We can see the movie post loads, and then I can tap back and I'm back in the movies index. And then I can go back into our app settings and it really feels like it's part of the app. So let's come back into movies and I'll show you our deep linking system, which is super cool. As I scroll down this page, you can see here that we are showing the latest updates from the community. This is coming from a WordPress widget that is displaying on this page from the theme. We can see it says John Smith posted an update. So what happens here? If I were to tap on John Smith, since I'm now in a web view, you might expect that we would be sent to John Smith's profile still within the Buddy Boss theme. Let's try it and see what happens. And like magic, we're now back in the app viewing John's profile in a native app view. We've built this deep linking system that allows the app to automatically read web links and parse them and determine if those links should be sent to profiles, to groups, learn dash courses, or any other native content from within the app. This allows you to seamlessly navigate between native content when available and web content. Let's go ahead and tap on his profile. And now we're viewing his profile still within a native app screen. I can tap back to get to his native member screen again, and then tap back to get back to the movie's web page, and then back again to get back to our native more screen. We've put a lot of work into making this a seamless experience where the non-native pages really feel like they're part of the app. Now I'm going to pause for a moment and move these web links into the tab bar at the bottom, just so you can see what that looks like. All right, so here we can see the WooCommerce shop and the movies pages have been added into the tab bar. Let's go ahead into the shop. We're back on the shop link. We can see that it keeps the native header bar at the top like before. And now we can see that it also keeps the native tab bar at the bottom. Here we are on the movies web link. Again, we can see that it keeps the native header bar at the top and the native tab bar at the bottom. In order to implement everything I've just shown you, this required no custom development at all. I just placed these WordPress pages into these tabs through the WordPress backend options pick the icons, and that's it. We're getting a really good web fallback experience with basically no work. Of course, we can still go further with this. If you wanted to take this custom post type and convert it into a true React Native screen, this is going to provide some additional benefits. The layout will be faster, the interface will be a bit smoother, and it will also be possible to take advantage of our API caching system, which I'll explain in a bit. So if you wanted to build this custom post type as a React Native screen, it would require a couple of steps. The first step is to write the API so that the app can sync data with your custom post type. Luckily, when registering a custom post type within WordPress, 
you can set that post type to be enabled in the WordPress REST API, and it will automatically create APIs through WordPress. These APIs include elements such as the post title, the post content, the author, featured image, taxonomy, and other related post data. As an example, let's come over to the More screen and take a look at the blog for a moment. In our app, this blog screen is a React Native screen, but we did not have to write all of these blog APIs. They came included in the core WordPress REST API. If your plugin is adding data beyond the basic structure of a custom post type, then you will probably need to write some custom APIs for those features. The second step is to create React Native screens in your app to display the content coming from the APIs. For this example of the movies custom post type, this would require two screens in the app. One screen is for this movies index, and another screen would be for a single movie. Our team at BuddyBoss can create these types of screens really quickly. For you, it will depend on your level of experience with React Native. And then the third optional step, if you want your app to be really fast, is to tap into our API caching system. APIs in our native social content and LearnDash content are actually cached on subsequent visits, which allows the pages in the app to load much faster than on the web and allows the app to be substantially more scalable than the web. This caching system will be brought back into BuddyBoss platform soon as well. You could register the APIs for your custom post type to be included into our API cache and then write code to determine which actions or events are supposed to purge the cache for that API. As time goes on, we will be creating more and more developer documentation showing you how to do all of this in detail. So as you can see, there are two methods for adding custom content into the app. You can use a web link to show content as web fallbacks, or you can code your own custom native screens. The nice thing about this approach is that as you add new features to your site, you don't have to wait for React Native screens to be built just to get them into the app. You can add a web link right away and get an experience that is as good as your website, but with deep linking and a seamless integration into the app navigation. And then if you do want to build custom React Native screens for that component to enhance the experience, you can always come back to that at any time in the future if it's really needed.